Hey guys, so I was getting ready to feed my dart frogs and I figured that we could talk a little bit about fruit flies while I'm at it. So I culture two different kinds of fruit flies. We have Melanogaster, which is a smaller kind, and Hydei, which is a, a bigger kind. Uh, both of them are flightless. They do have wings, but they have been line bred for the hobby to not fly. So they do jump, but they don't fly. So when you open the cup, they're not gonna fly in your face. I often get asked how to remove the flies from the culture into a cup. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about that and um, fruit flies in general. So on another video, I'm going to show you guys how to actually culture them. But today we're just gonna talk about um, the feeding. So in order to feed them, you want to have a deli cup with calcium. And um, this is how we're gonna dust fruit flies. So it doesn't matter how many frogs you have, you definitely wanna dust them. Um, so this is a culture that's uh, blooming, or booming, haha, <laughs> I always say blooming, but the terminology is actually booming. Uh, that means that the the culture has produced flies to feed. So in order to remove them from the cup, you're going to want to tap a little bit. And so you're going to tap it, you're going to have your cup below, and you're going to open it, and you're going to quickly just shake it out. I like to tap it a little bit just to get all of them out. And that's pretty much it. So each culture is going to last you about two weeks. Um, I have a lot of flies to feed, so I have a lot of cultures that I use at one time. And I keep both sizes separate. You want to use the smaller size for Pumilio or Renitimea, any of the small dart frogs, that's what you want to use. You want to use the larger fruit flies for larger frogs, any dendrobates or any of that kind. In order to remove them, you're going to you're gonna do the same thing for both. You're gonna tap it a little bit. You see how they all come down? You're gonna open it, and you're going to tap them in. So when you dust them, you can see that they get covered and they get white. This is gonna help them not be able to climb up your cup for a couple of minutes. And it's also, you see, these guys are still there. So uh, even if you put too many in the cup, then you're gonna use, you just feed your frog how much ever you wanna feed them, and then you can put the rest of it back into a culture. Um, it's important to, to dust every time uh, because the dart frogs need the calcium and the vitamins, but um, also it makes them way easier to handle. If you don't dust them, then they're gonna fly everywhere. Another thing that I like to do, as you can see, is I like to do this in my sink, which might not be so easy for some of you guys that share homes with other people. You, In that case, you can actually do this outside. If you have any kind of surface outside that you can go outside real quick and just dump them out. A lot of people have trouble uh, maintaining them in a spot. You see how they, they naturally come out. And when I do this in my sink, I usually wet it real quick um, so to keep them a little bit from coming out. But if they, even if they come out, then you can just wash them away. It's really not a huge deal. If you have large frogs and day geckos, the smaller day geckos anyway, they like to eat high DI fruit flies and they don't have to eat as many to get the same amount of nutrition. So that's actually really important. If you have baby frogs, you definitely want to feed them melanogaster. Now, something that people always ask me is if you can feed crickets to dart frogs because they do sell pinhead crickets. There's actually several reasons why this is not a good idea. First of all, crickets have a very bulky exoskeleton and um, they're really hard on the digestive tract of dart frogs. And you know, if you're gonna have one, you might as well do what they need, right? Uh, second of all, crickets are kind of expensive. A dart frog can eat 20, 30, 40, 50 fruit flies in a sitting. If you have to figure, you have to get that many per f that many crickets or pinhead crickets per frog per feeding. You're talking a buttload of money, which is not very convenient. Pinhead crickets will grow very quickly, so you're gonna need to buy them uh, very frequently 
while they're still the size that they can be edible. Now, all of that being said, you can definitely use them as treats per se, the way you give dogs treats. Um, every once in a while, it's definitely not a big deal. Now, over time, if you do it continually as a main food staple, then it will be hard on their digestive system. And it's kind of a gamble that I don't really like to take personally. But it's definitely nice for the frog to get a little variation every now and then. So if you can ever get small food items, then it's a great idea to, um, to switch up their food and keep it interesting. It's always fun to watch them go after food. Um, so f dart frogs are fed on average every other day. Uh, usually I find that if they eat, they don't really accept food every day. They tend to eat their fill one day, and then the next day I find that the day after the feeding, they all kind of vegetate and just hang out rather than the activity that I see on feeding days. Having a schedule for feeding is, is also a really good idea because they actually learn the schedule. My frogs know when it's feeding day, and they'll all be by the window waiting on their food. Actually, my geckos, too, and my chameleons. Actually, it's not a bad idea to be on a schedule for every animal because they all learn. They appreciate the consistency, and I find that it helps them. Like, knowing that they're going to get food helps them be healthy and, um, and happy. That sounds kind of cliche, but that's what I've learned over the last couple of years um, of being pretty religious about their, their feeding schedule and the frequency. Uh, as you can see, I culture my own fruit flies. So I'm going to do an entire video next time I make food fruit fly cultures um, of about how I make them. But in the meantime, I'm going to just let you guys know that I highly, highly recommend making your own cultures. It is way cheaper than buying pre-made cultures. And, um, and that is the only way for you to guarantee uh, that you have food for your frogs every single feeding because you get on a schedule. I've done the math and of... If you have between five and seven dart frogs, you only need one culture per week. That means every week on the same day, you just have to make one fresh culture, and that guarantees you food for them every time. Now you can see that I've got two cups going on here. On fly culture day, I do each fly in each sink so that they don't mix. Uh, right now, I'm not really being too crazy about it because they're all going to go to the same place. But when I'm going to use the flies for for um, for culturing more fresh cultures, then I definitely want to have them separate because if not, they will infiltrate the other's culture. You can see how they're white. You see the size difference too? Uh, this one's very small. This one's very big. It's always good to give the bigger frogs bigger flies because they get more nutrients out of it rather than having to eat so many little ones. And you can also see how because they're dusted, they're not climbing up the cup. So when you go and you feed out, all you have to do is dump them out just like that and you have a lot of control over the amount of food that you are giving your frogs um, rather than just opening up a culture and throwing it in the enclosure. So I'm gonna take this real quick and show you guys about how much I feed out. You can actually see some some frogs are ready for some food. So, so I dump it like this and I give them a little pile. Oop, that may have been a little much, but that's about right. There's about five frogs in here. They, the frogs know that it's feeding time. They all know that um, that there's food in their environment. Oh, you can actually see a frog back there eating. So they all come out and they start hunting. The flies, you can see how they all kind of stay there. They're not really going too far. And the frogs will slowly come out and they'll feed. And the fruit flies will disperse. What I find is nice is that the next day when the automatic mister goes off, it makes all the flies move. So for the next couple of days, any leftover flies will move. Here we can actually see a frog eating right there. Um, 
the flies will move with the mist which makes the frogs see them and then they will eat them so it kind of mimics a natural hunting if you will oh look another one came out they're all coming out because they see food yeah so there isn't really much to it you can see I have the doors open the flies are just hanging out they're not really a big deal so a lot of people are afraid of feeding out fruit flies but it's not really something you should be afraid of it's um it's pretty great and it's a little price to pay to have dart frogs so it's pretty great so next week I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I culture them um, which is pretty simple pretty straightforward I will show you my techniques and everything that I've learned over the last four years or so of um, keeping dart frogs so if you have any questions or if there's anything particular you guys want to see you should let me know so till next time